Yeah. Boyo Games here with Peter. Peter. Yeah. Of and what are we playing today? We are playing Varia. Varia. And uh, what role do you play with the company, Peter? Um, so I work with um, the company doing a little bit of development work as well as helping with um, running demos and doing um, events and things like that. So like when we go to conventions, um, helping teach people learn the game um, as well as, you know, talking about like what new decks there are, stuff like that. Um, and doing a little bit of development and playtesting as well. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Um, yeah, so like I was saying, um, I tried to play once last year. Didn't quite get through the whole game with all the distance and everything, but hopefully okay. you can clarify all that for me right yep. here today. Yeah. All right. Um, so, right, this is Varia. You start the game, right? You have your 30 cards of actions in your deck. You have 30 gold worth of items in front of you. Um, your opponent also has 30 gold, 30 cards, and you both have 30 health. So start the game, both players are going to draw six cards. All right. Okay. Now, um, for the purposes of the demo, this little bit is scripted. So... Um, you, as the warrior, are going to be the active player first, right? Um, there's a little cheat sheet on the left side that has the turn structure in Tabletop Simulator. Um, it's also in, like, all the rules books and stuff like that. So um, you, as the active player, are going to plan first. Um, so if you'd be so kind, you're going to look for a card in your hand called Critical Strike. You're going to put that down on the table somewhere. And it's face down, right? You can put. You're going to put it down face up. Um, all right. Critical strike. Perfect. Right. So what you just did is you created a moment in time, and this is what you are doing. If you'd be so kind, you're going to find another critical strike in your hand. Put it down right next to it. Perfect. And then we're going to use Thorium Crusher. Put it down in the right next to that last critical strike. Okay. So what you just did is you created three moments in time. This is what you're doing in moment one. This is what you're doing in moment two. This is what you're doing in moment three. That Thorium Crusher ends things off. All right. As the active player, you get to plan first. As the reactive player, I get to respond. Right? Okay. So I'm going to play cards in the moments that you created. I'm going to play Brace Yourself. Then I'm going to play Sublimate. And then I'm going to play Subtle Strike. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what's on the cards, right? So the name of a card is on the top in the middle. Um, critical Strike, Sublimate, Brace Yourself, Throwing Pressure, etc. Um, the cost of a card is in the top left. You get 10 action points to use every turn. You always go back to 10, um, no matter what you did the previous turn. All right, so that's what the little tracker on the bottom left is. For the most part, right, um, in, in most play, you can kind of keep track just by looking through and saying, yeah, right now you only have 10 action points planned, right? Three, six, ten. I have four, seven, ten. So we're both at ten, so we don't need to worry about tracking down either way, but we can if we wanted to. Now, that gold that you were talking about earlier, that's just for deck building purposes or what? Yes. So every deck... Um, that we sell is based on out-of-the-box play. So if you buy a warrior deck, you get the 30 cards that are in this deck. It's a known deck list plus the two items. Okay. And some token cards for tracking purposes um, of different stuff. Um, for deck building, right, the gold value gives you a way to balance out different decks against each other. Um, so you can say, oh, yeah, we're going to do um, a specific level deck with this much gold. Right, and that limits um, or doesn't limit, depending upon how much gold you let people use, the different items that people are allowed to bring to the fight. And as far as deck building goes, you've got to go with a pre-constructed deck, but you can switch up the hero and the equipment. So for deck building, um, there is a full constructed set, which we'll talk about um right, where, for example, um, Critical Strike... 
on the bottom right of it, there's a little fist symbol. Okay. That denotes the attribute aggression. So Critical Strike is what we call a level one aggression card. The Warrior is a level seven aggression deck. The Assassin is a subtlety deck, right? That's what I'm playing. Um, subtle, subtle Strike is a level one subtlety card. Brace Yourself and Sublimate are generic cards, right? So if you create um, decks, a way to balance out and mix and match the decks as well is to use the attribute requirements of the cards. So, for example, a level two deck um, could include Critical Strike and Subtle Strike because they're both right level one plus level one. We can talk about that a little bit later. Um so there's a way to mix and match with cards and a way to mix and match with items. I hate to put you on hold, but one second. Yep. My bad, my bad. I'm back. No worries. All right. Um, so, uh, to get back to the the you know the playthrough stuff, right? Action points are in the top left. All right. Right. You get ten. You go back to ten at the start of every turn. Um, the name of cards in the top center. The type and subtypes um, are on the bottom, right? So, critical strike is a physical attack strength. Um, sublimate is a magical block air. Brace yourself is a magical block arcane. Um, magic actions have this gold border and they say magical. Um, physical actions have this silver um, and they say physical. There can be physical and magical attacks and blocks or attack cards that are neither attacks nor blocks um, unless the card specifically calls out the type. Magical can block physical, physical can block magical, um, and that all works out. Okay. The other piece is, right, attacks. If we look in the top right, um, this says attack in the bottom left. It also has a little arrowhead symbol in the top right. Um, that is inside a square. The lower number is inside a little triangle. So the lower number, for you, that's a 3. That is going to be 3 plus 1d4. And the upper number is three plus one d6. So the lower number with the d4 is your focus. The higher number with the d6 is your power. Um, mine is zero plus one d4 and eight plus one d6. All right. So um, you are attacking. I am blocking. So we're going to roll and see what happens. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, and it's a uh, R for roll, right? Yes. You can also technically throw the dice in tabletop simulator if you really want, but R keeps them just like flipping over. Right. Okay. So when you are attacking someone who is blocking, the first thing you do is check the focus. The focus is basically your two hit roll in that instance. Your total focus is three plus three, which is six. My total focus is zero plus two, which is two. Six is greater than or equal to two. You will hit me, right? The hit happens. Okay. 
Then we look at power. Your total power is 3 plus 2, which is 5. My total power is 8 plus 5, which is 13. Right? You won't deal any damage. So the hit will happen, but the damage won't happen. So I've got to exceed your defense, basically, on the Correct. power die. Correct. Cool. All right. All right. Uh, man, this is a question that I asked myself when trying to play the first time. Why not include, like, a fist on that D6 symbol? Um. Well, I mean, a fist and a, a fence and a... Well, I see you have the shield there. For the defense, yep. but a fist, little arrowhead symbol know. and a little shield symbol uh, yeah. for attack versus block, and it also says it on the bottom of the card. Arrowhead, smooth that little. Yeah, yeah, that arrowhead, arrowhead just yeah didn't didn't stick with me, but yeah, all right, we got you though. Arrowhead, got you. All right, so that's everything for moment one, right? We've resolved the clash, so then we go to moment two, right? We again have an attack against the block, right? My power and focus, yep. yep. My power and focus are different. So again, we're going to roll, and we're going to see what happens, all right? Okay. Man, uh, how do I deselect the card? Um, if you just click on something else, it'll it should. I'll just move them one at a time. Yeah, we'll pull them, we'll pull them over. Yeah. And... yeah. Okay. So what is your total focus? All right, so that'll be three plus three. So that's a six focus. Correct. Versus My a total focus? Seven. Seven. Seven is... Right, I'm blocking. Seven is greater than six. I dodge. Nice. No damage, right? You miss. Cool. No hit either. Cool. All right. Perfect. That's moment two. Right. Now we're going to go to moment three. All right. Cool. Attack against attack. We are both going to hit. Okay. Right? We're both, we're both attacking each other, so we're both going to hit. So we're going to roll to check what happens with the power. Okay. So, um, we're gonna check the power here. Your total power, you have rules text on Thorium Crusher. The rules text on Thorium Crusher says, when making a focus roll for this action, if you roll the maximum value for one or more of the dice rolled, this action gets plus three power, plus zero focus until end of moment. You rolled a four. Sorry, that flipped over. You rolled a four on your focus die, which is the max value, right? You crit um, with that roll. So crit so just automatically hits, right? Yep. Attacks auto attack against attack automatically hits. Okay. But I mean, does a crit? Always hit though, even though the number it might be does not always hit depending upon what happens. Okay. Yeah, crit does not always hit. Okay, so it's you get the bonus the power, bonus. but you don't necessarily hit. Okay, so the uh, focus is good, so that's a uh, plus three on the hit, so that's three plus one is four plus three, that's seven. Yep, and I am also at seven. Okay. So, we'll go so down we won't seven. deal any damage. Oh, no damage. Only the excess nope. damage gets nope. dealt. If the powers are equal, we won't deal any damage. Cool. Right? It's like our, our swords clashed, and then we're evenly matched, um, so nobody was able to push out the other. Nice. That is the end of the first turn. Right? We've resolved all three moments. When we're done, we clean up. So with the cards that were used go to the discard pile. Your item, the Thorium Crusher, oh, yeah. comes back to you. Oh. Sorry. Yep. It comes back to your character zone. Um, your other two cards will go to your discard.
And right. So the items are there because they are what you brought to the fight. Um, it means, um, you know, they're, they're part of defining the way that deck plays. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is, that's the end of turn one, the start of turn two, right? Um, when the turn changes over, the reactive player becomes active, the active player becomes reactive. Both players draw two cards. Okay. All right. I am now the active player. I plan first. I'm going to plan Subtle Strike, Transfusion Draga, Transfusion Draga. You are free to plan how you wish. Um, Note that Subtle Strike has rules text that says actions with power greater than this action cannot be planned to clash with it. Which means that, for example, if you had to brace yourself in your hand, brace yourself has a power of 8, Subtle Strike has a power of 3, you could not plan brace yourself against Subtle Strike. You could, however, plan a Critical Strike, your Molten Ravager, or a Thorium Crusher against it, because all those have a power of 3 or lower. Um, the Transfusion Dragons are just two magical attacks. So I'll leave it to you. Um, I would strongly recommend not planning more than 10 action points um, worth of actions oh, yeah. on this turn. And uh, why didn't you start the uh, the time on V? Just choice. Okay. Oh, that. Um, so we can only do four moments in time now versus the five? So we can only do... Three, because the active player chooses how many moments exist, right? I chose to create three moments in time. You can choose to create as many or as few moments as you want. Um, when you are the active player, one moment always exists. So you can't say, I'm not going to do anything, no time exists, pass, and then you just go to like the next turn. Um, one moment in time always exists. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Um, you good with your plan? Yep. Okay. So we're going to talk about one thing that we skipped last turn because it was your first turn of Varia. Um, in the turn structure card, there's action, reaction, which is what you just did. And then there is fast action. So there are fast action cards. Bowie knife is one of them from the assassin. There's a little lightning bolt symbol in the top right, and it says the keyword fast. A fast keyword says you may plan this action in both the fast action and fast reaction steps. You may plan this action as a combo or as a replacement. Attacks and blocks cannot be combined. So what this means is Bowie knife right here can do one of two things. I can choose to replace because I don't like that matchup. The transfusion drega that was replaced goes to my forgotten pile. When we resolve the turn, this timeline is what we see. Subtle strike, bowie knife, transfusion drega. And you've got the option to flash in first before me? or As the active player, I get to make fast actions first. You, as the reactive player, also get to choose to make fast actions if you so choose. Um, you may also pass. The other thing I can do with a fast action, right, if I leave the transfusion dragon out, um, the other thing I can do with this is combine, right? So if I combine the transfusion dragon, right, this becomes a five action point cost um, transfusion Drago Bowie Knife, it is a magical physical action. All the rules text combines into one big thing. It also gets two power dice and two focus dice because the Transfusion Drago card grants a power and a focus die, and the Bowie Knife card grants a power and a focus die. All right? Okay. So I could do the, that. Where did the five thing that you were talking about come from? Where did the what thing? Oh, it's like the, taking up five, five points. Right, so the Bowie knife is a three in the top left. Gotcha. The transfusion drag is a two. Okay, five. So it's two plus three. So the, the cost adds up as well. Gotcha. Right? Okay. You don't you don't get it for free. Cool. Um, 
And so I'm going to choose to combine my Bowie knife with this subtle strike here against the critical strike. All right. Cool. Then I'm going to pass it to you for fast actions. You may choose to make a fast action or not. I'll pass. You can pass. All right. Once you have passed, it technically comes back to me again because I made a fast action this turn. I'm going to pass. When both players pass in succession, you go to resolve. All right? Now, um, we have attack against attack, right? Okay. So we're going to roll. And there's no special color for defenses, is there? Nope. Okay. All right, so that's a three, three. No maxes. So it's a six focus. Mm -hmm. Six attack. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure you would see that. So. Yes, I am at a thirteen power. Right. You are at a six power. Thirteen minus six is seven, so you're going to take seven damage. Down to twenty-three. All right. That's moment one, right? Yep. Moment two, right? Spellbreaker against Transfusion Dragon again. It's attack against attack. Spellbreaker has. Um, you see that little hourglass symbol? It says. Um, that is a start of moment symbol. It's a start of moment, engage your target. We'll talk about that uh, next turn. If your target's action is magical, this action gets plus three power, plus three focus until end of moment. So Spellbreaker becomes a six power, six focus attack. Cool. All right? Because cool. it sees the Transfusion Dragon is magic. Oh, yeah. So we're going to roll. Eight. Right. Uh, so what happens? It's a eight focus, eleven power. Mm -hmm. I'm a six power, or excuse me, I'm at a five power, right? Yep. Um, you're at eleven. Eleven minus five, six. I will take six damage. All right. Now we're on to moment three. Transfusion drag against sublimate. This is attack against block, right? So you may dodge, depending upon how the rolls happen. Okay. So we're going to roll and see what goes. So no point in even rolling the power die, right? There is a point in rolling the power die because you do have a power. So if I do hit, you can prevent damage as well, right? So we're going to roll both. Okay, got you, got you. Yep. <clears throat> So that's uh, so right. My total focus is five. Looks like I have a seven, seven focus. So, does that mean you miss? Correct, I miss. Okay, so I guess your power doesn't proc since you don't hit. Cool. I don't, I swing and miss, so I can't hit you. Um, so I won't deal any damage. Okay, and then we'll All right. go to round three. Yep. Going to the third turn. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about distance here, right? So up until now, we've been what we call engaged. Up close, personal, um, in your face fighting, right? That's not how everybody fights. The active player, right? If you pull up the little turn structure card, start a turn, both players draw two cards, regain spend action points. So two is movement, active player may move. At the start of the turn, the active player may choose to be engaged or disengaged. Um, for the purposes of the demo, we're going to ask you to be engaged. And if you'd be so kind, if you could plan a card that should be in your hand called Flurry of Fists. Uh, after I draw two, perhaps it will be. Yes. Um, yes. <clears throat> there we go. All right. So okay. I can put it anywhere on the timeline, though. Yep. Put it down. All right. And let's go to the R this time. So Flurry of Fist says, when you plan this action, you may create a token that is a copy of it in the next available moment. 
You may repeat this any number of times. Ah, oh, screw that. I'll go into V then, I guess. All right. So you can create a whole bunch of copies of Flurry of Fists. Okay. Right? <clears throat> you can do a lot of Flurry of Fists. You can do an, a lot, right? If you plan out additional Flurry of Fists beyond five, right? Okay. You pay in Varia and everything happens moment by moment. So you'd be able to perf you'd be able to do this. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. All these extra flurry of fists would become the things that you do next turn. Okay. All right. Um, do people ever just go infinite on flurry of fists? It doesn't work out super well because right, it means that you're kind of pre-planned the whole rest of the way. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. It does come out kind of handy in certain matchups because, for example, right, as the warrior, right, in this instance right now, I only have four cards in my hand, right? You have created one, two, three, four, five, plus however many other actions you want to do, right? You've created five moments that you can do that it costs two from one card. What does it right? show that you're the warrior? Yeah, you're playing as a warrior. Uh, what right. does it show that I'm the warrior? Um, so that would be from the items in the pre-constructed deck, right? Um, there's also in the, if you have the starter set, there's a um, lore card for Magnus um, as well in there. Um, as well as in some of the other deck boxes. But so... Um, but, like, right now, with the cards on the field, I wouldn't exactly know that I'm the warrior unless I just know it. Right. Like, the, the cards that you have planned are you just punching a whole lot. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so, and that's right, because in the in constructed play, right, you'd be able to take this Flurry Fist and put it into a different deck and not be the warrior, right? Um so it lets you kind of free flow. Um, and with the pre-constructed decks, there's a, like I said, there's a list of cards that are in that deck. So if you want to put stuff back together, you just have a list um, so that you know what goes into it. Um, so all right, you've used <clears throat> one card to create a lot of actions. Um, how many Flurry of Fists do you want to create? kind of leave this up to you um five is nice right because you can perform all five um but you could do you could do more if you wanted you could do less if you wanted it's up to you and we'll just go for six okay <clears throat> so right this means that this will be the first thing you do the next turn so um in that instance right we've been engaged right I'm going to run away. Um, I'm going to play backflip. Backflip says, um, start of moment, disengage from your target, which means that when before you would hit me, right, when we're resolving, um, we're going to pay. At the start of the moment, it's going to happen. I'm going to flip away. We're going to be disengaged the rest of the turn. Because your attack is not ranged, you will not be able to hit me this whole turn. Okay. This is all I'm going to do right now. I'm going to pass it to you for fast actions. Um, if you have a fast action in hand, you'd be able to play it. You would be looking for a fast action that is that says ranged on it or has engage in the rules text somewhere. Okay. So I could just uh, swap out right here. Okay. <laughs> Then uh, this we get discarded or go back to hand. It would go to the forgotten pile. However, there's one thing that I'm going to make you note aware of. All right, flurry of fists and explosive charge. Explosive charge is start of moment. Engage your target. So there has to be some. But I also have start of moment. Disengage from your target. One of them has to go before the other. You are the active player. 
the active player's trigger happens first. So this would mean that you would come charging in and I would still backflip away. So the play, if you would like to replace, would be to put the explosive charge here. This token poofs off. Okay, so you were and saying that you, you flipped doing. away first because you were the... I'm the active right. this time, right? You, you're the active player, so your stuff happens first. Okay, but you did start right. of the beat or whatever. You backflip. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I would still backflip away and we stay disengaged. This way, what's going to happen is you're going to swing and miss in the first moment. But in this next moment, you're going to come charging back in, and then we're going to stay engaged the rest of the turn. Cool. All right? Right. So, uh, yeah, but then you, have you made a fast perfect. action. Yeah. I'm going to make a fast action. Right. I'm going to put my Bowie knife down here in the last moment. Right? Because you're going to hit me in the face a whole lot, um, and I will pass to you. Right? Oh, so it's just uh, one fast at a time, back and forth? It's not necessarily one fast at a time. You can um, you can do multiple fasts in a single turn or in a single sequence before giving it back. But um, that's a strategic choice that you can make, right? Like you could have, if you have multiple fast actions, you could do multiple swaps in the same sequence. Um, but you might also want to hold on to it. Because you might have want you might want to see what the other person does in response to what you're doing now, right? So like if you were playing the explosive charge, um, and then you had a different fast action that you could play that does something different, like you might use that in a different place, right? So it gives you a back and forth planning um, that may or may not be what you want to do, right? Um, yeah. Okay. But you All can right. just do one fast pass it to you the can opponent. Just, yeah, you can do one, right? So you if you did one, you pass, then you could do another, pass, do another, the opponent passes, right? Until it goes until both players pass one after the other. Cool. Um so if you if you do pass, it doesn't have to it's not gonna come back to you if the opponent is happy with where things are at. Gotcha. All right. All righty. All right, so you backflip. Oh, I backflip. We become disengaged. You're going to charge in with explosive charge, which says, um, it also says, if this action causes you to move toward your target and become engaged with them, this action gains an extra power die, right? So you get to roll 2d6. Oh, so you've done no planning over there because you've got Correct. four. Seven. I don't have anything, right? As the reactive player, you don't have to plan into the moments that are created. You can pick and choose where you go. But, um, right, in this instance, you're just going to hit me for damage because I'm not doing anything. Cool. All right. Whatever you roll for those 2d6 is just damage I'm going to take. So I'm going to take eight. eight. Okay. All right. These two flurry of fists, you're also going to hit me for damage. And uh, these, uh, these fist pips on the bottom of this explosive charge, what do those mean? So that is the aggression requirement of the card, right? So remember, um, we talked about deck building a little bit. So I'm going to pull up cards from your discard pile real quick, which is going to make things a little bit messy. Um, so the warrior is an aggression deck, right? The warrior's level one aggression card is called Critical Strike. Their level three aggression card is called Spellbreaker. Their level six aggression card is called Explosive Charge. So if you do deck building, right, um, and you created a level five deck, right, a level five deck cannot use explosive charge because explosive charge is a level six card. Okay. Right? It could use Spellbreaker. It could use Critical Strike. Um, in the same vein, if you created level two decks, you couldn't use Spellbreaker or Explosive Charge. But you could use Critical Strike. Um, and like I said, right, so Subtle Strike is a subtlety, right? So Subtle Strike plus Critical Strike is a level two deck. It's one aggression, one subtlety. Spellbreaker plus Subtle Strike is a level four deck. Explosive Charge and Subtle Strike is a level seven deck, right? Okay. Um, 
the Assassin's Level 2 card is Transfusion Draga, right? A Level 5 deck that has Spellbreaker and Transfusion Draga could also include Subtle Strike and Critical Strike because they are Level 1 actions in those respective attributes. You only count the highest of you count the highest attributes. in that requirement for deck building, yes. That just kind of keeps the decks even is what it is for. Right. It's it's a way, so right in, um, as we put it, cards get more efficient and more unique as you go deeper into some of the attributes. Um, so certain cards um, that pop up in different decks, right? Like a, a level seven card in an attribute, it has a very unique effect to that attribute, for example, Right. Um, it's something that is not going to show up in a different deck pretty much any way, shape, or form. Um, so you get rewarded for going really deep into an attribute. But at the same time, you might be able to get a really good synergy by multi-classing that may or may not exist with other things. Um, some of that also depends, right, if you're doing a constructed deck, it depends on what level decks you want to play. Um, a lot of people like uh, level 10 constructed because it allows you to automatically create a hybrid deck because level 7 is the max in out of the box. So, right, like a level 7 card is the highest a card will be. So, right, you're automatically 7 plus 3 if you go really deep into a different one, um, which allows you a lot of flexibility on deck building um, and could can create some really powerful combos. Can you include more than two attributes? Yep. Yeah. So if you if you want to do a le- you could there are seven attributes to choose from. Um, so you could do a level seven deck that's all level ones from every attribute, right? Um, which right the highest of each type. So you could be right if you were doing a level ten deck, right? You could be level three of one, level four of another and level two and level two. So you could be split, right? So three, four, two, one, right? Um, you could be five, three, one, one. Um, it's just checking that highest attribute requirement. Okay. But uh, it's kind of smarter to stick with a seven and a three. Because you can um, higher powered cards, but not necessarily. It, but it's not. You're right. That's where um, it depends on how you want to build your deck, what type of player you like to be. Um, because in out of the box, most of the decks are single attribute, but some of the out of the box decks are hybrid. Um, so they may have they may have cards that are in fact automatically like already. Um, intellect subtlety cards so they already have two different attributes on the card okay right um okay the max level on any card right now is seven right right max level on any card is seven cool and then right there are also cards that are generic which can pop into any deck um so Cool. Um, right, we finished moment two. You hit me for eight. Right. Moment three, you have a flurry of fists. And again, you're just going to hit me for whatever damage you roll on the die. And you're going to hit me for whatever damage you roll on the die for the second flurry of fists as well. Okay. So it's up to you. You can roll them at the same time. You can roll them one at a time. Uh, Doesn't matter to me. I'll take one. one. And then I'll take five. Uh, I'm down to 10. Okay. All right. Moment five. A weapon. Moment five, we have Flurry of Fists against the Bowie Knife, right? We're actually going to clash. So we're going to roll and see what happens. So, okay. 
seven focus and a yep. four power. Yep. Um, and I'm at a one focus. We're both attacking, so we're going to hit. And I'm at a five power. Okay. So, so we're going to take one damage. I'll take one. Oh. All right. Now, that's um, the end of the turn for now because that's all of what we can pay for. This moment in time still exists, but we're not doing anything because you don't have any action points left, and I don't have anything planned. I'm trying so the, to remember. I'm trying to remember though, like on your on your um player reminder cards, y'all didn't have the uh, the thing about attack on attack. Both guys always hit, but attack on defense, you might not hit. Did y'all put that um, on the player reference card? That's, that's in um. It should be in the rule book for the starter set for how to resolve the clash, um, which is also in the rule book that goes with um, the season two box. Um, but if you buy an individual deck pack, um, there's just a, um, I believe, a QR code that links to the rules on the website, um, which has that in there. Um my advice is uh, get a few more player reference cards, but that's me though. Uh, Different type of player reference cards. Never mind. Yep. Uh, so, right, so we'll clean. right, that's the end of this turn. Right? The tokens don't go into your discard, the tokens come off. Right? And kind of poof. But the two cards that you used are sent to your discard. Yeah, this Flurry Fist goes to your discard. The one with the silver border. So, right, tokens have a little, they have a darker border and they have a little T on the bottom. Um, so, that one sticks around because this was moment six, right? Okay. This is the end of the demo, right? This is, we're into the free play realm now. Um, you are welcome to, right? We can, we can shuffle these decks all we want. Um, Kinda, and kinda. No, you're fine. You're fine. Right. Um, and we can we can play, right? Oh yeah. Until one of us is dead, basically. Um, so, um, right. You were the active player last turn. I am the active player this turn. I'm going to choose for us to be disengaged. All right. I'm going to choose to plan. Phantom's kiss which is a ranged attack. It says ranged on it. It's one of the keywords. This action cannot miss due to distance. It's the start of moment trigger. If you are disengaged from your target, this action gets plus three power, plus three focus until end of moment. Okay. So that will be a six power, six focus attack um, against your flurry fist, which I created just one moment, right? You are locked into this flurry of fists. Right, Unless this I is the disadvantage face. of creating I mean, additional face, moments. Though, right, right? Is I knew that the flurry fist was coming, so I could plan around it. I'm going to pass on any additional moment planning. Right, it goes to you for the flurry fist. It's already there. I'm going to put my Bowie knife on this Phantom's kiss. Pass to you for fast actions. You may or may not have a fast action. Yeah, no fast. All right. Um, so now we're going to go to resolve. All right. So we're going to roll. Uh, we're both attacking, right? So the hit's automatically going to happen. My total power is 13. 13 on a 4, I guess that's 9 damage. No, no, no. Yep. Yeah, 9 damage. Alright, so going to uh, 13. Right. Yep. That's the end of the turn. Token comes off. Token. We both draw 2 because you are now active. And uh, why didn't y'all include like an active player token? Um, so it, um, is one of those things where in the base decks, 
Um, depending upon what, do you know, which decks do you have? I have that original two player starter set deal. Okay. Um, so right, that's where in the starter set, um, it's one of those things where tracking that back and forth is something that, um, players can choose to do however you want with it. Um, right. We didn't want to bog people down with, like, you don't need a, um, specific token. You can just say, right. Like, Oh, Hey, this, you know, this card denotes that we're who's active. Right. And then you pass it back and forth. Um, or depending for some players, they just remember, um, Right. So it's something that we uh, may include in future deck releases um, just because people have asked for it. But at the time we were like, uh, okay, um, yeah. So, yeah, um, you are the active player um, and you can choose, right? Do we are we engaged? Are we disengaged? And you can plan however many moments you wish. One more gripe I got. I got I to gotta spill the grapes. But uh, much like Yu-Gi-Oh! with the pips or whatever, the stars, maybe like a division of each three. Because I, I always hate trying to count the pips. But then they're all running together. Then you get confused and you got to recount it. Yeah. But I just hate yeah, that person. We have... Um... I see there's a division at the five, but I prefer yeah. like the three or something. But. Division if you have more than five. Um, Which is way better than Yu-Gi-Oh, but still. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. Hmm. What's up with that card that you cut in half? Yep. Sorry, what were you going to say? I said, where's the card that you cut in half it? Um, those are stacks. In Tabletop Simulator, they kind of hang out in a big sack over here. Okay. So you just pull them out as needed. Okay. Um, in the same vein, like you can technically pull decks out of this thing on the side. Cool. Um which has all 16 current decks um, in here. And then there's um, a, a base rule book um, on the side as well. This including the two that are on the way? Uh, no, there's only the 16 that are currently released are in here. Um, the two that are on the way are still in development. There's, um, they're getting set up so that they can be added to the tabletop simulator pretty soon. Um, but they're still doing some final internal play testing, um, as well as, um, finalizing like, um, flavor text, um, and things like that to kind of get the right polish. Um, cool. Okay. So you're doing Brace Yourself and then Arias Tarka? Yep. Okay, are we engaged or disengaged? Engage. Okay. Um, cool. So brace yourself as a block, right? You're good with that. Oh crap! I uh, didn't didn't so much uh, think about that. So like, if I actively use a block, I'm not going to do any damage, right? Correct. Right. You're pre you're going to prevent damage, oh. um, but blocks don't deal damage. Oh, uh, well, yeah, let me go back to the drawing board on that. That's it's totally fine. There are, um, right, especially with fast actions, right, there are ways to totally plan a block such that you can use it 
to create a moment that you can use a fast action to put into later, right? You can use the block as like a feint. Um, it's pretty common with the assassin deck. It's also something that some of the other decks um, may do in varying levels, um, you know, depending upon how they're set up. Okay. 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 Um, so, you've got Thorium Crafter and then Arius Tarka. Um, of note, Arius Tarka is a card that does not have a power die, right? But it is an attack. So it doesn't get any power, which is why it doesn't have that symbol in the top right. Um, but it is an attack that has an on-hit effect. Um, so... Um, we're engaged. Um, I'm going to plan combat reflexes, which is a block that says when you plan this action, create a token that is a copy of it in the next available moment. Nice. It's going to go right there. And then I will pass to you for fast actions. I'm going to replace this combat reflexes token with my Bowie knife and pass to you. No fast. Okay. I will also pass. All right. So now we're going to resolve combat reflexes against Thorium Crusher. Attack against block. We're going to roll. We got a lowly four, which sucks. My focus is a seven, so you will miss. Horribly. All right, so you blocked, so and so block, moment. Blocking means you do no damage, right? Right, I don't do any damage. Okay, cool. All right, um, then yeah, roll, and then I guess we'll roll for Tarka. Yep, you're going to roll um, your focus die. I'm going to roll my focus and power. You're not going to deal any damage to me with Tarka, right? It doesn't get a power die. It just hits. Okay. All right. So we're going to roll. So you're going to lose five health, right? Because I have a five power. Okay. Then you have on hit choose one, right? Ruin an item your target controls or apply one fatigue. Ruin an item, right, means the buoy knife, the ebon cloak, or the profane memento. I would turn it to the side and then I basically can't use it the rest of the game, right? You take it off the field um, for me to use if you choose to ruin. Fatigue is a stack. <coughs> fatigue says actions you perform have end of moment. You lose one health point for each stack of fatigue you have. And this right? is a half card, right? Yeah, this is one of the, the half cards. Um, in future releases, um, when we had some of the space available, we upped it to a full-size card um, for some of them. Okay. Uh, so because people for, didn't like cutting the cards what's up say that again sorry because people didn't like to cut the cards yeah and and people wanted to have it as like a full card on its own especially if they were doing it constructed because they didn't need the other card to go with it um and right it was set up so like you can um Right. The idea was basically like you have one card, one sleeve, and keep it um, tidy for the people who wanted it that way. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And uh, that um, that hourglass on the bottom, that's uh, end of the beat or end of the moment? Correct. It's end of the moment. Yep. 
And so what this means is, right, if you choose to ruin an item, right, because you get your choice, right, the Bowie knife would go away, wouldn't be able to use it again. If you choose to fatigue, right, and you could ruin the Bowie knife, you could ruin the Ebon Cloak or the Profane Memento, it's up to you. Um, if you choose fatigue, right, um, I would lose one health at the end of this moment because I did something, and then I would lose one health in every future moment where I'm doing something, right? So if I plant a card and put it down, I would lose one health for doing that thing because I'm tired. So, right, I would functionally have, I would lose one health, go down to nine. I would have nine more actions that I could do before dying from being fatigued. Okay. Yeah, let's definitely go with the fatigue. And uh, okay. and the um, and this is a three elves game or what? Three copies so of a card we're... per game. Is this a three copies of a card game, or how does that work? There are in the in the out of the box decks. Um, there are different numbers of cards in each deck, depending upon um, the way it works out. So, for example, in the warrior deck, this Arius Tarka, there's one in the warrior deck. Okay. Um, it is a generic card, so it does pop up in other decks. Um, some of the cards pop up three times. Three is the max that there can be in a deck. Like, if you just wanted to optimize a deck, you could just do three copies per any card. Right, right? you could do three per um, of whichever card you want. Now you are on the offensive. Correct. I am now active. I'm going to choose to plan. Um... Oh, uh, did you draw two already? Yes. So you should be down to 14 in your. Cool. Okay. You and you can always track it like that. There's never any card draw cards. There are a few. Um, cards that will let you interact with the deck in different ways um not in the starter set right the warrior and the assassin you're always going to draw two um and you don't have a draw or other interaction um the fencer the sorcerer the um mecha trap artificer and the spell sword all have ways to interact with the deck. Um, so the fencer and the artificer both have a way to make your opponent discard a card and draw more. Um, the sorcerer can make themselves draw more cards. And the spell sword has a card that um, after you use it, instead of going to discard, it will go back into the deck. So kind of like the more you use it, right, the more it's going to it's gonna keep popping back up. Um, but it will go into your deck and then kind of cycle back up. It um, specifically goes in six from the top. So it's not like you're going to get it back the next turn. You're going to get it back, you know, three turns later. Um, and there's only um, two in the deck. So um, kind of the best you can do is keep cycling just those same two cards. Um, but you'd have to use basically like just your item and those two cards and have no other strategic options um, if you didn't want to draw other cards in your deck. You don't deck out. Um, when you reach the end of the deck, you take what's in your discard and you're forgotten, you shuffle them back together, you gain a stack of fatigue when you draw the additional cards that you need. Nice. Right. Right. Um, so different different decks, right? The, um, the sorcerer, because they have a draw mechanic, um, the sorcerer is all about, like, go, right? Like, they want to draw a whole bunch of cards, they have a whole bunch of options in hand so they can kill somebody really their um their big move is to um 
you know, draw cards that they have a whole bunch of stuff in hand, they will probably lose health to do that. Um, and they run the risk of putting themselves into fatigue, uh, which means that they'll, you know, put themselves on a timer. Um, so I'm going to put that here. So transfusion Draga and then subtle strike and then pass to you for response. We're going to be engaged. Okay. Just wondering, since we're talking about it, what makes a dragon knight so special? So the Dragon Knight um, is a hybrid class. That's what I was thinking. Um, they are. Um, they came out between season one and season two. Um, they are aggression and tenacity. So they have a couple aggression cards and a couple tenacity cards instead of being purely in one attribute or the other. Um, the Dragon Knight's um, core gameplay um, for their style is about. Um, choosing when to unleash your inner dragon. Um, so there's certain cards that um, you can choose to create an additional token to combine with them. That additional token means that when you do that action, it will cost you health. It also means that the moment after that, you will have to be um, on pause, basically. You um, automatically plan a, a token card called Vulnerable, um, the vulnerable token is something that you cannot replace or combine with. So basically, like, you'd have a really, really big hit and then an open moment immediately after that. Um, and so as the Dragon Knight, um, it plays in that, that sequence of, like, if you go for a really, really big hit and your opponent can get out of it, then they can hit you when you're open the next moment. Um, and in the same vein, like... You also want to be able to trade favorably with those big hits. Um, so they play um, like being the boss um, in a Dark Souls game, where like they have really big hits, um, but your opponent may try to like dodge roll out and and plink you a little bit here and there. Okay. So when you're talking about planning, like with this subtle strike, actions yep. with power greater than this action can't be planned to yep. clash with it. So if I go a base three versus a base three, that'll work. Yep. But at the right. beginning of the moment, if it gets plus three, does that negate the yep. uh, attack that I play or no? No, if you have a card that gains a bonus after this, at the start of the moment or at some point in time later, that's totally valid. What matters when you plan is what is in that top right number. Okay. So if you have something that says... Um, you know, this action gains... So, like, for example, in the Druid deck, they have a card that says this action gains plus three power if um, you haven't moved since the start of the previous moment. They can totally play them against Subtle Strike. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. Um, so you've planned. We're going to go to fast actions now. Um, the highest, so cranial crash, right? It says that star is equal to three plus the highest. Fist, right, the highest aggression requirement of cards in your discard pile. That's the explosive charge. Yep. So cranial crash currently is six plus three, nine. It's a nine power attack. Cool. I'm going to use a fast action. I'm going to put a wind shank down here. And I will pass to you for fast actions. I'm going to pass it right on back to you. I'm going to put my Bowie knife down here on this subtle strike. Pass to you. I'll go ahead and pass it again. This right. order never matters, right? 
Say that again. Discard pile order never matters, right? Nope. Nope. You can um, re so the discard pile you can reorder and look in as much as you so choose. Either player for either discard pile. The yeah. forgotten pile you cannot look at. Do you happen to know like a way to like uh splay out the cards real nice and neaty, neat? From the Discord in, world, in Tabletop Simulator, I do not know. Okay, yeah. Not really good. Um, right. I know you can search. You can right-click. Oh, yeah. And there's a search, which will pull up all the cards and, like, a little list. Um, oh, about that. Yeah. In a physical format, um, you can kind of, like... Um, you can either set it up so that you can just kind of look through it as needed. Um, in some instances... Like, with, if I'm playing the Warrior and I know the Cranial Crash is a card in there, I'll just leave whichever my highest aggression requirement card is just on top of my discard. Cool. Um, but it doesn't matter what your discard pile looks like. Um, it just keeps it a little bit easier, um, especially if you have to look through it at some point in time or anything else. So. Gotcha. Um, we're going to go to resolve, right? attack against attack. You're a power of nine. I'm a power of two. Um, so my total power is six. I got a team. So I'm going to take four. And then I'm going to lose one for, fatigue. for fatigue. Right? Yep. Then we go to moment two. Spellbreaker against the subtle strike of Bowie Knife. Right? Spellbreaker, um, my action is not magical, so you won't get the bonus. I don't know what I was thinking there. Why did I not... True. So, right. interestingly, it wasn't actually a bad consideration because, right, the nice part about Spellbreaker, putting it there in some way, is that it prevents me from using a magical fast action. Right? Like, if I put the windshank over here in moment two, you would have gotten your bonus. So, like, that's a. Sometimes you can use it to. F prevent your opponent from putting down something fast if it would cause them more harm. So it's not necessarily a bad play. Okay, so all uh, of your fast in your deck are magical. Right, like this windshank is, is magical. The Bowie Knife is not. There are other fast actions that are not magical. Cool. Um, in the like Assassin this. deck okay. and in the Warrior deck. Right, so that'll say magical um, on it and have the gold border or it'll say physical on it and have the the silvery border um that's that's where um knowing your deck um and knowing your opponent's deck can matter more or less as the warrior it also means if you're playing against somebody that has a lot of magical actions right so for example if you're the war and you're playing against the mage the index the mage's entire deck is magic so you can play in spellbreaker whenever you want um, so yeah, um, nice. moment two, we're going to roll. All right, so All right, my total power is 11. So I've got a three, eight. Yep, yep. so you're going to take three. I'm going to lose one to fatigue and go down to three. At the end of that turn. Yeah, and also, like, I can't reiterate this enough. Like, when I tried to play that one time, like, if y'all had to play a reference card with the, like, yeah. with the damage on, with the attack on tech, only the highest goes through, and then yeah. attack on defense or whatever, that would go a long way. And with the distance and everything, and get, well, I mean, y'all kind of say move up, but maybe even expound upon that and uh I was going to say, with the distance in um, future deck releases, there's a little card that's a flip that's like this, that's engaged or disengaged. Oh, yeah, perfect, perfect, yeah. Yeah. Great. It's right. not in the starter set, um, unfortunately. Gotcha. Okay. And then we go to the next round. And you are active. Too, I would also consider like a chit or whatever for the active person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, 
I'm going to make this dice yellow. I'm going to give it to you. You That'll denote you as being active. Right? Like, that's... There we go. There we go. Right? I've also done it with somebody where we had um, a token to note. We were playing um, on Tabletop Simulator, and um, their sound wasn't working, so we had a, a um, little like token that we just kind of passed back and forth for when we were done planning as well, instead of just saying pass, because their comms weren't working. But uh, yeah, so you're active. Yeah, I'll be engaged. Okay. That's fair. I only have three health left. Already. All right. Um, this is going to be tricky. gonna plan y'all have some of the contributors in the art like the seal spear um in s some of the season two decks um some of the backers um were able to submit an image to get made into a card um, for the rest of them. Um, you'd have to talk to um, Ant, who's done a lot of the art direction stuff. Um, for the most part, um, the um, part of, of the art is kind of giving the artists a chance to put their own style into um, the different decks and the different actions, right? So, like, um, you know, the warrior is in both Thorium Crusher on the art and in this Spellbreaker card, right? So, like, that's the warrior in the lower left. Um, and then this is the warrior with the Thorium Crusher. Um, and, right, so the two different artists are kind of interpreting um, things a little bit differently. Um, Shield Spear um, is actually denoting somebody who's getting hit by the warrior, um, nice. just in terms of, of right, so different different artists um, kind of get different prompts, right? The um, cranial crash, right? It's the warrior um, again with a slightly different style, um, you know, head button, somebody else. Um, so we're gonna do this. Um, and I'm going to pass to you to see what you do. Okay. When you plan this action, create a token, it's a cover. Right, so this, is, this is combat reflexes block, block, and block. Okay. Uh, which, um, 
if you're following along, right, if I block for all three moments, I will lose one health each moment and die at the end of the turn. Oh, well, okay. This, this might not be my final plan. Okay, you might fast it, okay. All right, but um, I guess I got the initiative, so I guess I'll yep. just go ahead and pass it. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to get rid of this first combat reflexes, right? It's going to go to Forgotten. I'm going to plan a card called Way of the Blade. Way of the Blade um, says, start of moment, if your target is attacking you with a physical action, both this action and your target's action are treated as if they are unopposed this moment. So what this means is that your damage will automatically go through and hit me. My damage would also automatically go through and hit you. Um, which also means the way it stands right now, right? Spellbreaker is a three power. So no matter what, I will die on this hit. Um, however, Way of the Blade is the one card that gives a chance to play for a tie. Um, because if I roll enough damage, you will also die. Uh, and we'll both be dead. Okay, I've got um, All right. Uh, you know what? With, um, right. And if you're if you're thinking about like ways to counteract this movement or whatever else, right? If you had a magical fast action, my damage would not go through. If you made um, the action not physical, hmm. I can't just swap in any kind of fast, can I? You could swap if you have any fast action. You could put it on, um, but. Right, a physical fast action will not prevent the way of the blade from happening because it looks for physical actions attacking. If you had a block, you could swap in a block. Okay. Um, so, right, if you swapped in any block that was fast or any. Um, yeah, so I'll, um, just, I'll just swap in this swift escape. Okay. And so, right, if you swap it in, this goes to your forgotten pile. Okay. Yep. And so, right, Swift Escape um, says end of moment disengage from your target. Oh, end of moment. Ah, okay. So That's okay, right? So you Swift Escape, right? You, have, you still have five health. Okay. All right. Swift Escape's focus is three. Um, okay. so I can still miss swift escape also still prevents damage. It still has a power die. Yeah. So I still could not kill you even if I hit, right? Okay. And for reference, right? Way of the blade has a zero focus, zero power. So if I roll a four on my focus, you would have to roll a one for me to even hit currently. Which means um, there's a right. It's a one in sixteen chance of happening, which is why I'm going to try to up those odds. I'm going to plan Bowie knife on this way of the blade. And all combo and, cards are also fast, right? If anything that has a fast symbol, you can combine. Yes, if you so choose. Oh, I could have combined this uh, fast escape deal too, right? Swift escape. Yep, you could have. So you can combine cards with. Um, if it's an attack, you can combine it with an attack. If it's a block, you can combine it with a block. You cannot combine attacks and blocks. Okay. Yeah, that's another one for the reference card. For reference card number two. But yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. I guess I'll uh pass it. Okay. I will also pass. Um, so right, no matter what, um, either right now, right, you're going to roll, I'm going to roll. If I kill you in moment one, I win. If you dodge or otherwise prevent enough damage that you survive, I will be dead at the end of moment three, no matter what. Okay. Come on, four. 
Thank okay. You. My total focus is five. I've got a three and a one, so that's a four. I will hit. My total power is seven. Seven on my block of four. That matters, right? Yeah, yeah. Seven on my block of... And your block, right, your block is preventing four, so you will only take three. Three. All right. Yeah, it would have been better to obviously just keep the uh, Spellbreaker out, right? If you had kept the Spellbreaker out, right, okay. it would have been and Iron Bolt 7 power, okay. we would both be dead, and we would tie. Yeah, that was right. a big point of contention in my first attempt at playing, like that uh, attack on attack versus attack on block. Yeah, okay. So you're saying like 7 on a 3 attack, we'd have both, I'd have swung for whatever. So... If if I had rolled a seven power, right, normally, and you had rolled a three power normally, um, or a four power normally, or whatever, then it would be the difference between. Because I played Way of the Blade specifically, Way of the Blade says you treat them as if they're unopposed. So if Way of the Blade, that card specifically, is out, right, and you were attacking me with a physical action, oh. you're... Action doesn't prevent any damage. My action doesn't prevent any damage. Oh, uh, okay. Just just because of the way of the blade. Got because you. of the way of the blade. Right. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, right. So I you take will three, go down uh, two. three. Right. You're down to two. I lose one health at the end of the moment for fatigue. Moment two, we are now disengaged, right? So, um, you won't hit me at all. This whiffs. Minus one on the beat. I lose one for doing the combat reflexes. Now, now I mean, here's we still, where... We can, still, um, we can still do fast, though, can we? Not at this point, because you said we were good and we started resolving. If you want to go back and do oh, no, other no, fasts, no, 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 no. we can. I don't have any fast. Okay. I'm oh, just thinking you might so, have but... some, but... Yep. So this is where, um, right, I've used, right, I'm going to track this down. I've used seven action points for my first moment. And then I've used it another two for my second moment. Oh, yeah, like I it switches up. Yeah. I can't do the ebb and cloak. Wow. Right? Yeah. Very so, dynamic game. Just a lot of rules to understand on the onboarding. Okay. I can't do the ebb and cloak. For Shield Spear, it says, start a moment, you may discard a block. If you have a block in your hand, right, even if it's not fast, you can discard it. Yep. Shield Spear becomes ranged, and I am dead. Yeah. GG's. Man. Yeah. Great game. If y'all could get people onboarded faster, that would be lovely. Okay. We're working on it. Thanks for playing. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Glad I finally got a game done. No problem. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, tell them when that next two decks are coming out again. Um, there's not a formal release date. Um, most likely um, December, January for... Um, shipping depending upon um supplier stuff i don't work with that side um directly but most likely at or around the holidays um packs unplugged um potentially as well cool. right which is beginning of december cool straight on the playvaria.com right not kickstarter anything yep yep straight on the straight on the um straight on the website Cool. All right. Yeah, been a pleasure, Peter. Yeah, it's been good. Thanks for coming out. Oh yeah. Thank you for the teach. You know, have a great one. I guess later, Gators. Yep. Have a good night. You too. Right. Later, later.